So, it's come to my attention more than once that I need to echo the sentiment that according to my personal experience, the general population of black men are already divested, right? So there is this thing with divested black women and people are like, oh, she just wants white zaddy, blah, 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 you know, projecting, you know, their intentions onto us. Um, But in reality, have you ever heard black men say, oh, well, you know, I have no inclination or obligation to protect a black woman who I don't know? Like, if a black woman is being harassed on the street, why should I care? Is she my mom? Is she my daughter? Then what business is it of mine? Right? This is how the average black man speaks. Not my black man, but the average black man. So, do y'all, y'all know that that's the definition of being divested, right? Being divested as a black woman means... If that black man ain't my daddy, ain't my son, ain't my concern, ain't my man, I don't care about him. What is so violent and so wrong about saying the same thing black men say about you? What is what is so wrong with returning the same energy? You literally see black women visiting the manosphere and all these different channels and having these debates and all these black men keep uh, continuing to say that, you know, I, I don't she's not my concern. She's not my charged. I'm not charged with her safety. So what? She's another black woman that don't have nothing to do with me. They laughed at the death of Corinne Gaines, made plenty of jokes. They let Jessica X call Breonna Taylor a trap queen and laughed about it. They said Sandra Bland got what she deserved. They didn't care. Only the black men related to Sandra Bland and maybe a few black men like the one that I was lucky enough to land. Maybe they gave a good goddamn. Excuse my language. Maybe they gave a good care. But you hear this over and over again. It it just drowns out the black male voice in social media the message the resounding message of black male social media is not my girl not my problem and so when it comes to police brutality mandatory minimums and all these different things not my man not my problem is 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 that horrible now for me it's a little bit difficult to get there it's a little bit difficult to own being divested because I'm an empath. I, I can't not care. I care about people I don't know. I care about people who are not black. I care about what goes on, you know, in Palestine. I care about, you know, Uyghur Muslims. I care about, you know, people being persecuted, you know, in Burma and uh, the Rohingya. Being, so, of course, I care about random black people. Of course I do. I have a heart that has always belonged to the underdog. So as much as I can make sense of black women divesting, I myself am not, but I am a huge empathizer of it. Or, and I mean, I've, I've been called divested, you know, diet divested, divested Coke Zero and, and all this other stuff from a girl tap and everything else. But like, sis, Black men have been divested for decades and haven't, they, they just didn't say, it, say a word, like they didn't have a word for it. It wasn't a movement. For them, it was very natural to turn their backs on every single black woman who is unrelated to them. Not my woman, not my problem. Not my mama, not my problem. You hear them say that every single day. You heard them say that in the 80s. You heard them say that uh, yesterday. 2021. So is it a crime if you say the same thing? I mean, it's it's incredible the way that people feel entitled to the muling of black women. Like, oh, well, I'm a man, so I deserve respect. Couldn't I say I'm a woman, so I deserve respect? Like, 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 no, it, 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 it doesn't work that way. You give it to get it. Now, what I will say is that my default response to all people is respect. For me, it's like I'm that school teacher who told all my kids, you know, you start out with a grade letter A in my class. You just have to maintain it. So when I first meet you, of course, I'm a decent person. I'm going to respect you unless you earn otherwise. 
But at the same time, there's already established disrespect. I mean, Kevin Samuels wouldn't be such a huge hit if humiliating and degrading black women wasn't something that people love, especially black men. And even, you know, the the sellout pick me's of, you know, among black women. So my thing is black women are getting it on all sides. You don't really have any allies. It's a sad thing to hear and to say and to internalize, but that's just kind of the truth. But I'm just like, black women are totally scared to treat people the way that they are treated. Says black men have been divested. They've been, you know, and there's this thing I asked my, um, because I, I talked to my partner about this, right? And we had a huge disagreement about it. It wasn't like a big argument or anything. We, um, we're, we're not the arguing type. Um, and I've argued with people before, but our dynamic is such that we just, we don't argue. We can disagree, but arguments just, they don't happen. Uh, we're both very well aware of one another's emotions, sensitivity, and we honor that in one another. We don't want to erode or corrode that. So I asked him, I was like, aren't these, aren't these divested women, you know, like, um, Ajib. So Ajib is an Arabic word for, um, strange. And I was like, don't you find them strange? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, a divested woman is not like a swirler. I mean, there are some people who are both, but these divested women, Because the swirler could have grown up, you know, self-hating. The swirler could have grown up, you know, oh, I want mixed kids with light eyes and light hair. Oh, I hate being dark. I have low self-esteem. I hate my nose, you know. But I'm like, these divested women were all pro-black. Have you noticed? These divested women, especially, you know, the Gen X and, and millennials, they've given Dr. Omar Johnson money. You know, they've, uh, they, they, they've uh, fought the good fight. They've encouraged people, you know, to watch Tariq Nasheed's hidden colors and hidden figures or whatever the hell it is and bed bucking, breaking. Well, maybe not that because they're already divested. But, you know, everything before that, all the hidden colors, one, two, three, four. I'm like, have you noticed? These are women who used to, you know, patronize a lot of hip hop and, you know, buy those little Wayne tapes and go see Kevin Hart until they got tired of being made fun of for being dark skinned. They got tired of being made fun of for being anything but, you know, black and not biracial. They got tired. But their values were never, oh, I just want to yield to white zaddy. Oh, I'm in love with white zaddy. Oh, bend me over white zaddy. Like that was never them. Like, that can be some swirlers, but I'm just like, that was, that was never the divested girl. A lot of these divested women were the women who would say things like, oh, I like my men, like, I like my coffee, strong and black. These are the women who bigged up the egos of the dark-skinned black men to the point where mediocre or even unattractive dark-skinned black men think that they deserve the cream of the crop. And these are the black women who are responsible for that because they loved them so hard, so much, so excessively, aggressively and excessively, successively, generation after generation. I'm like, aren't these women strange to you, babe? And, you know, of course, you know, because he's a good black man, he's an incredible, great, ideal black man. I mean, truly a unicorn, a true pro-black, not the kind who's looking for, you know, a mixed woman like like I look like him. I look like his mama. Okay, And because he is such a righteous, decent, the way you ought to be black man. He views things through the lens of himself. And I'm just like, you know, he thinks he's average. And I'm just like, baby, you're a unicorn. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't see a whole lot of yous, you know, floating around. I don't. I, I see them. They're out there. Hey, high five. But, but you're not the majority. You're not the motion in the ocean, honey. You're, you're, not, you're not the wave. 
the wave is the manosphere. The wave is Kevin Samuels. The wave is these men who are anti-black female and who believe that they have leveled up anytime they get with a woman outside of their race, outside of their country, outside of who they are, outside of who their mothers and grandmothers are. That's the wave. That's the majority. That's the ocean we're swimming in. Like, babe, these are waves. These are oceans, lakes. You might be a creek, honey. You're, you're, you're a pond out here. Like, like, it's not like you don't have bodies of water, but honey, the ocean is the manosphere, the black manosphere. That's the black man that we're used to. That is today's average black man. I believe that he doesn't. He is such a high value so-and-so. He just thinks the manosphere are a bunch of losers who are marginalized and outside of their mind, weaklings, whatever. And I'm just like, I think the manosphere is the average black man. I really, I really and surely do. And I'm like, you know, divested women, we're, 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 divested women are unlike the women who are saying, I want mixed kids. They're unlike the women who are saying, you know, I've always hated my dark skin and nappy hair, blah, blah. They're, they're unlike that. A lot of di- divested women, they're naturals. <laughs> They've got dreads. They've got dark skin. They are boule. They are delta sigma theta. They are AKA. They are like 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 they are bachelor's degrees. They are GDIs. They went to HBCUs. They went to PWIs. They are nurses. They are doctors, lawyers. They are caretakers. You know, homeowners. Like I'm like, a lot of these divested women are coming from the black middle class and upper middle class. There's not a whole lot of hood chicks that are divested. They're the who's who's and the so-and-so's of our society. Have you noticed? And uh, somebody told me the other day that Dr. Umar Johnson is filling the brunt of divested women. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you have that guy. What was his name of the Nat Turner thing? Is his name Nate Parker? I don't know his name. But, you know, his movie flopped after all of us wanted to see it. I mean, and I loved that man so much. But definitely when I saw the the sum total of what he was, I was just like, you know, that this guy's supporting him is not for me. Uh, the guy from um, Power who kissed Beyonce in an incredibly inappropriate way. And I will always hate him for that. I saw the discomfort on her face. But like he's the one with a white wife who, you know, was basically incredibly disrespectful to his black female fan, which are the women who built his career. Black women are noticing this as a trend among black men. And we're saying, OK, well, we're done. We're done. And you have Dr. Omar Johnson who says all the right things to us, all the right things. But I'm just like, I think it was Mo Kamami who said his marketability, his marketability isn't his availability, meaning he's got women, especially black single mothers, throwing money at him left and right because they think that maybe if they get close enough, they can be the one. And, you know, he's got his baby mamas and and children and he is pro-black family, pro-black love, but doesn't have a black family or black love in his life. And so the bread and brother, excuse me, I'm I'm trying to say brother, (laughs) the bread and butter of the brother is um, the bread and butter of this brother has turned into A sea of divested women, a sea of women who are tired of being exploited, a sea of women who are tired of being neglected, a sea of women who are tired of building up men only to be, you know, Bob the Builder, Barbara the Builder, you know, the 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 starter wife, the one who, you know, built this man up. And once he became who he, you know, wanted to be now, she's no longer his type and he abandons her and all her loyalty and all her work. And then the moment he gets his biracial who cheats on him, it's all these hoes ain't loyal, even though he had a good woman who built him up and who he couldn't be loyal to. Right. These the, these women, they're, they're spent. Their Their energy is spent. And it's a strange thing because a lot of these, some of these divested women, I mean, are the same women who said, ew, a pink penis. I could never. Ew, pink paint. Mm-mm. And they're like, you know what? 
I want to be treated right. You know what? I work too damn hard to go through this amount of disrespect. I want to be a wife. I'm not trying to be a baby mama. I'm not trying to be a long-term girlfriend. I want a ring. I want a marriage license. I want a deed to a home. And if there's not enough, you know, black men who are on that level, who think like that and who have those kind of values, then I'm just going to expand my options. This is what I want. And if a man gives this to me in red, yellow, black or white, that that's what it's going to be. I mean, people so desperately want to turn divested women and, and swirler women into because even swirlers are not, you know, not all swirlers are created equal, honey. There, there's there's really there's levels to it. They're not all created equally. Some of them just oh, they said, oh, excuse me, it's late. It's like 4 a.m. As I'm recording, perhaps once I upload this, it'll be four hours later. But um, I think so many times the men are trying to understand us through the lens of themselves. So they will look at a swirler. They will look at a divested woman and say, oh, you just want to be white. Oh, you just want to submit to white zaddy. And I'm just like, no, that's your thought process because we wanted you and you know it. You you can you can propagate all these lies and 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 give up all this rhetoric that makes you look like you're in the right because you can't stand to admit you know your own fault but in reality these are the women who wanted you the most who supported you the most with their faithfulness with their finances with everything and they said you know what i'm tired all my life i had to fight i love harpo god knows i do but i kill him dead if he, if he put his hands on me They got tired. These are the women who who have seen every single Tyler Perry movie. These are the women who, you know, watch Norbit. These are the women who, you know, these women are blickety black. The majority of these divested women are are formerly pro-blacks. Now, yes, you have a few famous hood chicks, you know, YouTube famous, social media famous hood chicks who are divested. And, you know, th- honestly, they're the exception to the rule. And as you all know, by now, the exception to the rule does not negate the rule. It actually proves the rule. But a lot of these divested women are truly quality. And dare I say, it sounds like people are getting scared, but I'm just like, no. Your preferences and and uh, let them let them be by your side. I mean, you prefer them for a reason, right? They're better in character. They're better in loyalty. They're better in looks. They're better in everything. They're better in spirituality. Better in culture. So be it. So let your future and your fate be with them. That's all. I am a unicorn and I am out of here.